as I talked every day with climate scientists, innovators, sustainability experts, and more, the pervasive theme we all took away from this week was that Gen Z is speaking up. They're using their voices to speak change to those in power, but also leaning in to use their own platforms to showcase the change makers that are doing the work. So it looks like we're in the middle of the city, because we are, but we're also on this giant urban rooftop garden that is the roof of the Javits Center. It's a almost seven acre rooftop garden. Here there's over 50 different kinds of crops that they grow each season. Like if you want a certain kind of tomato, they'll get you. And here we are in the greenhouse so they can grow crops year round. They grow crops A to Z, arugula to zucchini. And this is their orchard, which is the world's largest rooftop orchard with 32 apple trees and six pear trees. Underneath all of this is a 344,000 gallon tank that collects rainwater, is treated and converted, used to irrigate all these crops. They produce over 40,000 pounds of produce each year which is used for the conference center meals. Yo, what's up guys? I'm A.Y. Young, founder of the Battery Tour and one of the 17 United Nations Young Leaders of the World, guys. And we're here in Times Square to do the first ever Renewable Energy Power Concert. In the history of Times Square, I brought the Battery Tour here. I'm gonna walk you guys through real quick, right here. This is my Battery Tour trailer. Like, uh, this is how I power all the concerts with renewable energy, right? So we store energy from the sun into these batteries, right? Oh shoot, let's go, we got a lot of batteries. Into these batteries, right? And then, and then uh, you know, so here are the solar panels, the uh, sun, sun hits it, you know, it's stored into these batteries. And then here's my inverter that turns it from something called direct current to alternating current. And then I can just plug right in and power a concert. I'll walk you guys through the stage and everything. Here's obviously iconic. Uh, Duffy Square. We're launching this project called 17. I made one song for each of the sustainable development goals, these 17 things that the UN said we had to do by 2030. And I made a song for each goal. And I've been lining up a, I've been lining up a corporate sponsor per goal. And, uh, and now we're going to do that music. So here's the stage. It's pretty awesome. We got some of the best technology as far as solar uh, and battery tech in the world. We're here with the Smart Flower as well. This thing will be providing like four kilowatts of energy, powering half the concert alongside the battery tour trailer. Look at it. It follows the sun. It opens up, captures that solar energy, stores it, and you can plug right in and power anything. You know what I'm saying? Does it still work? I hear that all the time. Like, will the battery tour work? Will renewable energy work? If it's dark, if it's shady, if there is no sun? Well. That's why energy storage is, is the best thing, right? Because we're actually storing energy. So guys, here it is right here. You're about to see it. Part of the pause for world peace. The battery tour is powering the first ever renewable energy powered concert. And I'm performing AY. It's gonna be great. Enjoy! Weather Channel! We can change the world. So we got to come together now. We got to come together. This is a climate clock and it is a portable scientific instrument that gives us the data and the science of what we need to do to meet our climate challenge. And the top number is our deadline. This is based on UN IPCC data and it tells us how long we have until we are going to lock in blowing past the 1.5 degree average temperature rise. It's a critical point of no return that scientists have told us we do not want to go past. And as you can see, it says we now have less than six years, AKA five years, to make dramatic progress on our climate challenge. The good news is that there is hope. So it's meant to be a wake up call, an alarm bell, but also giving us a clear path so that we can do the things we need to do to protect the future for our children and all future generations. Listen to your children, they know. We're bargaining with their future and they're mad and they have every right to be. We have to do everything we possibly can. You know, we are the first generation to feel the effects of the climate crisis and we're the last generation that can do anything about it. We have to fight to create a future for our young ones. 
that the comedy we try to do around climate is like very human, um, right? Like the jokes are, are just about like the human messiness of existing in a world where there is a climate catastrophe and where we are doing our best. Um, and something that we also try to do as comedians, and this is the ethos of Generation 180, one of the co-creators of the Climate Comedy Cohort, and, and where I spend a lot of time as the comedian in residence and, and work with them a lot, is, um, is making sure that we're telling a particular type of story. We've been laughing about it, we've been ironic about it, we've been talking about the dynamics of how to communicate about it, but then it still comes down to this fundamental fact of like, how do you actually feel about it? And do you sincerely feel hope, or do you feel hope, trademark hope, like hope that you're sort of pointing to and wishing that you actually feel? How do you feel about it? It's a sincere question. This was not my plan, by the way. This is what I'm doing because the projector's not working. <laughs> it was supposed to be a joke that I was sobering it up, but now I've really killed the room completely, as much as possible, with the seriousness of our imminent demise. I'm a young climate advocate in my country, advocating for the inclusion of children and youth in climate negotiations, in transforming the climate policies so that they can be climate friendly in my country and in the whole world. But also I am advocating for children and youth to be meaningfully engaged, not only in climate action programs, but also like how I say, to be engaged with leaders so as to transform the policies in the country. I am so inspired by so many young people who are living and breathing this every day and I'm so privileged to give a voice to it. I think when you see people who've lived this, who are so motivated to do the work and speak to leaders and encourage them to listen and take action, it, it's the least I can do to raise up my voice and hope that people will just be led to them and their incredible work. We're gonna inherit this planet. It's so valuable and meaningful for us to be brought to the table to have these discussions now, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that are gonna be left with the problem if leaders don't listen to us now. I think young people, a lot of the time, like, I, you know, speaking for myself, I feel like I'm not an expert, I'm not good enough, I'm not ready, but really we are. We can bring voice to the issues that we see every day, the air we breathe uh, for people who may be displaced because of climate issues. It's, we are experts. We just need to be taken seriously. And I think hopefully change will come and, and we are, we will be. Marching to a drumbeat like a soldier into battle a deadly waltz, or the sound of resilience unwavering, or a child's chant to the tune of a nursery rhyme. But there is no comfort in counting sheep, only the world that exists in daydream. In my dreams, I picture the beach. I feel the sun on my skin, warm like a mother's hug, gluing together all the parts of the world we've shattered along the way. The sand between my toes a reminder that this can be real if I want it to be. This dream can be real if we make it to be. Never easy, but always possible. With glimmers of it right in front of me, sparkling like light reflections in the ocean or stars in the sky. Real ones, not lit windows in buildings, but pockets of bright with their own worlds and universes that live light years away but the magic that exists in these legend distant planets, the magic that creates these endless possibilities of storied futures exists right here on Earth too. It flows through our veins like the Hudson in New York, like the water that nourishes us through rivers and kitchen faucets. The magic lives in our ability to create, our ability to change, to build, destroy, and build again the worlds we lose, and the worlds we have yet to gain. Climate change is a national security issue. Climate change is a threat uh, to what we do and how we do it. The Navy and Marine Corps, it is your naval fighting force. And so by default, they are at the coastlines and on the ocean. That is our operational environment. And so when you see these increased storms, we see sea level rise. Those are all of the things that are impacting the way that we operate because those are the essentials that make sure that we have what we need to do when we need to do it when the nation calls. And that's the opportunity that these students have as they plan what I'm sure will be their incredible futures. 
there's a pathway here that through science, through their passion for what is a big threat in our environment, whether you look at it from national security or from day-to-day -day living, they can make a difference and they certainly have a place to contribute with us. 75% of our cities are delivering faster, bigger emission reductions than their respective nation states. And we want the nation states to harness that ambition. And particularly this week, our message is we've got to focus on stopping the use of fossil fuels. No new investment in fossil fuels, halve the consumption of fossil fuels this decade, which we can do with the kind of power cities have. You know, the power to bring in a clean air zone that helps price out dirty polluting vehicles or building regulations that make it cheaper to install renewable energy rather than gas. Climate change is not only uh, weather change, climate change is already massive devastation because of floods, because of hurricanes. We had the hottest summer ever, we had the hottest months ever. Uh, we see acceleration, not only in, in the temperature increase, but we see acceleration in the rise of the sea level. And this will put soon in danger even cities like the city of New York. So it's time for leaders to understand that they must change course. We need to reduce 45% of the present levels of emissions until 2030. Climate change remains the defining problem and threat of our time, but we, still, we are still on time if we have the political will, they must take seriously the need to drastically reduce emissions. There is still time to reverse the trend. Will the next generation help us build a better future? And what can you do right now to make a difference? Learn more on the Weather Channel and Pattern.